Good afternoon, my name's Rachel and this is a scrap busting tutorial aimed at junk journalers, scrapbookers and just paper crafters in general. I have a series of tutorials on scrap busting all around the 5 to 10 minute mark. They're easy to do, ideal for, by, for beginners, ideal for beginners or those who find that they don't have as much time for crafting as they'd like to but still want the pleasure of getting creative and making things with perhaps a limited time. Um, this tutorial is for these and I think of these as um, bell jar style um, junk journal cards. So they've all got writing spaces on the back and they're all quite different. I did this one on embossed paper so this one doesn't have a writing space on it yet although you could write on that although I think the pattern is so lovely I don't know if I can. So that one was very simple just collage on top of that. That one was um, stickers um, just placed on there. And these two both had quite thin bases. That one, piece of atlas, sticker, and I went for a thicker base so I could actually stick a word there. And this again, I went for a thicker base. That's a sticker, sticker, scrap paper, and just a random um, few words taken from my word stash. So tears like silver raindrops, just thought that really worked. Okay, so in order to make this you will need at least one piece of scrap paper, you will need card to make a template and a glass to help with the making of that template, glue, optional double sided tape and you'll see why by the end, thick uh, marker, any other type of pen, um, if you would like to have something written on the base of yours, then either a strip which you've printed with some words or a page from a book that you're going to cut the words out of. An image that you want to go within the um, scrap that's going to make up the bell jar. And this can be any image. It can be a sticker. I got this from the Extraordinary Things to Cut Out and Collage um, book, which is amazing if you want lots and lots of things to fussy cut and use. And you need a piece of paper, this is a bit of tea dyed scrap, um, to use for the back of the card for um, a writing space. If you wish to use a writing space at all, if you don't, then you can skip that bit. And you need a piece of, I'm using black because that goes with the marker I've used, but whatever marker you use, you could always mimic that with the colour below, so you don't necessarily have to use black. Okay, so step one is to make the template. So I decided how wide I wanted to make my bell jar. This will probably be individual to you, depending on the size of journal you use. So I worked out that about something of this width would fit nicely in my journal without being too big or too small. I then got a glass and used that for the curve at the top. Um, very, very easy to do. And I cut this, as you can see, I drew this on a piece of, a piece of cereal box piece of card. Now with these ones I started off drawing these with like a sharpie so it was quite a fine point to cut round and actually I preferred using a thicker mark for these ones so you had more of a defined um, outside to the bell jar shape but it's it's up to you what one you prefer. So I've already drawn this one using my marker and now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out but I'm trying to stay as close to the outside of the marker as possible so not cutting within the lines so there you go there's the piece I want to use now you can collage you can do all kinds of things in here but for this example I'm just doing something nice and simple <clears throat> next step is to cut the writing space to put on the back and I've got a thinner pencil here sorry pencil I just happened to grab a felt tip but you can use whatever you can find and because I want this to be smaller so it fits within the scale of the back I'm going to cut within the lines so by a couple of millimeters just cutting within those lines and I pre-cut the other piece because I thought there's only so much that people want to see of me cutting round and out of a template and because I've cut within the lines there's plenty of space there when I stick it down so I don't have to worry about any overlap. So I'll quickly do that now. Just grabbing a glue page from a gardening catalogue. And I've just made this as um, a writing space just to stick on the back. But you could always um, fold a piece of card 
and cut the template so say that's the folded bit and cut that bit round so actually uh, the back of the bell jar opens as a writing space so there's there's always options whenever you look at someone's tutorial i'm sure the majority of people think oh i could do that differently i could try that and that's part of the reason of these tutorials you know anyone who's got an idea you know we pass it on and then someone takes that idea they do different things with it then the next person does different things and that's one of the lovely things about the creative community it's great Okay, so the next thing I want to do is put something in there. I'm going to get fold that. And I've just used a simple dog here, but you could go for something really colourful. I think because my other ones were quite colourful, I was tempted to try something quite monochromatic, quite simple. Um, and as you saw, um, I didn't just use text with my other pieces, so... I used text there and there, but I also used embossed paper there and I used that there. And I think this really works. So you could probably use patterned car, uh, patterned card, craft paper, whatever. Check your scraps. That's what this tutorial is for. Using up those scraps in interesting ways. Right. So that is the main body of the card done. Now. I've cut um, a nice wide piece here because I want to have a word on it. And I don't have a template for this because depending on how you cut around there, your um, item may need to be uh, longer or shorter. So it's really just about using good old fingernail tool or thumbnail tool. Okay, that's a little bit on the lock. There you go. But if you wanted it to be much wider, you could. If you wanted it to be shorter, you could. You could have it right in line with the lines. Entirely your choice. So I think I'm just going to use one. Do I want to use both widths? And I'm just hand cutting this because it doesn't matter to me if this bit's straight or not. But if you want something really straight, like with this one, I cut that quite precisely. Um, if you want it really straight, and that's what you do, I think two whoops. Or just I think just one because that's quite a tall elegant beast so I think we just need the one get out the good old glue pages again and if ever you have catalogues calendars that kind of thing give them one last lease of life before you pop them in the recycling and use them for this kind of thing now I mentioned earlier that you can use double-sided tape with this and that's what I'm going to use along here I'm just going to stick that along the bottom obviously make sure that the width is right or cut it down to size you can glue it but I just fancied using a bit of double-sided tape here and then hold it up And depending on how you do it, you may decide, oh, I do need to trim the other side just a little bit, just to make it equal. And there you go. Really simple. A bell jar, um, cloche jar type um, look to your journal card. There's space to write there. You could either um, stick this to the bottom so it flips down. Or you could have this as a tuck in. You could even glue along there. Or along there and have it as a tuck spot for something else and it's just a lovely unusual shape um, and just something fun to do with all those extra scraps that we accrue so I hope you found this useful if you do have a go I would love to see um, what you decide to put in your bell jar so um, please do tag me on Instagram because we've all got different scraps we all interpret these um, tutorials differently so it's really interesting to see what people do with the same idea anyway I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.